Um, so now that you've been in the industry, you said almost coming up 40 years, 30 something years, I think you said, uh, and 21 years with Sterling. What is some advice that, you know, two part question again, uh, what is some advice that you would love to tell your specific self, you know, that if you were starting off and what is some advice that you'd like to tell a new artist starting up, you know, whether it be in the industry in general or whether it be specific to mastering in your specific, uh, subset. Um, what would I tell myself? I mean, there were times during, during my career, I thought about getting out, you know, there were some lows in my career work wise and like, just I made transitions from one studio to another and you know I hadn't had a hit record in a while and and I thought about getting out and you know I'm just glad I never got out I'm glad I just stuck with it and I sucked it up and I and I remained strong about my beliefs about what I could do and and you know what I wanted to do and you know I mean I would have definitely told myself stay with it (laughs) you know like if it's your passion (laughs) live your passion man don't like like selling out or giving in like I tell the young kids when they come in here, like I, no parent wants their kid to be in the music business. And <laughs> I'm a, I have three kids and I have one son in the music business. And, you know, when he said he wanted to do it, when he was 12, he started playing guitar and he never put it down. And he's mm-hmm. 23 now. Mm-hmm. And he plays every instrument. He's a producer, a mixer, an artist. He does all this stuff. And at no point during that did I ever tell him to think about something else. You know, I never told him to change his mind or try something else or, you know, look for a second job. And he's, you know, he lives in L.A. now. He's, you know, he's going through it. He, you know, there's high points and low points. And I just keep offering him advice, like to stay with it. You know, maybe go to another, try and get a job at another studio, look for new artists, look for new people to work with. Just keep doing that. But don't give up because I believe in him as, you know, a mixer and a producer and an artist, you know. He's really good. And I'm not just saying that because he's my son, but I don't want to like, I want him to believe in himself and to like follow through with his dream. Absolutely. Know? And it's so fascinating, man. I, I completely second what you're saying. I mean, obviously you have a ton more experience than I do, but I, I, even on a smaller scale, I completely relate to what you're saying in the sense of like, there were plenty of times I wanted to, you know, give up my, my career. And like, I didn't see any fruit or any real movement in my career you know, for, I mean, I dropped out of college seven years ago to do music full time. And like, it was like seven years of pretty much nothing. And, you know, like I tell this story all the time from the day that I dropped out of college. And now I think about it, like, you know, one day the goal obviously is to win a Grammy kind of thing. And it's like, you know, <clears throat> that Grammy speech, I need to thank my wife more than anything else for sticking with me through all these crazy things. Cause it's like, of course I had the, 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 the balls to do it, but like, she didn't sign up for that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, I, at it, this point, I'd even thank my, I'd thank my ex-wife at this point for <laughs> for never backing out of like my beliefs and whatever back when we were married. But like, you know, like it's just, it's one of these things, like it's so hard to like, like really get into this business and then to maintain it and Mm -hmm. do it. I've had like, I've had friends that like still ask me when they see me, like, are you still doing the music thing? I'm like, (laughs) the music thing. Oh my gosh. Still doing the music thing. <laughs> Still doing it. Yeah. You know, and then like who you work with, like Dua Lipa. Really? Like they look at me like I'm not cool enough to work with Dua Lipa or, you know, Harry Styles or, you know, Lady Gaga. It's like, yeah, they actually hire me to do their, you know, like. People have no concept like, of the offensiveness that they put off when they say stuff. I know. It's that, so funny, man. Here's something funny. The first time I was nominated for a Grammy, I told my parents and they're like, really? And I was like, yeah. You know, I was like, yeah, I have the number one record in the world. Oh my and, gosh. And they were like, Oh, okay. Whatever that means. You know, I was oh like, Oh my gosh. That's the worst too. When nobody has a concept of what you're actually like the, the, the gravity of what you're talking about too. That's the worst too. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, I just, I like, I, I struggle all that stuff off now. Like I don't even, yeah, care. of course, oh. of course. It comes with time. Absolutely. Absolutely.